It looks like any other busy office in the bustling Kenyan capital, Nairobi, but this is the nerve center of a technology firm that uses basic mobile phones to improve business for thousands of farmers across East Africa. It's called M-Farm, and it gives the farmers who use it vital data direct to their mobile handsets. I come up with tools that help farmers get information about crop produce, prices, and also know where to sell their produce at the best price. That's Isaac Mogitutu, one of the programmers here in a cramped office beside the traffic-clogged Ngong Road. He explains how M Farm helps a farmer who, for example, has just harvested an avocado crop in the West Kenyan town of Eldoret. So you have your avocados at the farm and you aren't trying to sell them. So what you do is text M Farm for the price of avocados in Eldoret, then you get back a message with the price of avocados. Then you can text back to M Farm with the keyword sell, call it 100 kgs that you have, and the price that you got from the first message. That will come to our service and it will go live on our website. Any buyer who's seeing this will uh, send a message direct to the farmer if they want to trade with the farmer and the farmer will get market. The system has been running for a little over two years and already has 6,000 subscribers. The key is providing farmers with information that stops them being ripped off by middlemen, says Mogitutu. We have some farmers in Naivasha who we initially started with before they were selling their snow peas at a price of 20, 30 shillings. And us coming in, we link them to a buyer who's buying 90 shillings per kilo. So they're getting more than 100% increase in whatever returns they were getting than before. M Farm makes its money by taking a small cut from each sale. It aims to have 10,000 users next year and eventually wants to run an exchange for all farm produce across Africa. M Farm is just one of dozens of technology firms that have sprung up alongside the bustling and gong road in western Nairobi. The area has been dubbed Silicon Savannah. But unlike its counterpart in the San Francisco Bay Area, the programmers here are addressing local rather than global problems. They take advantage of the fact that huge numbers of Kenyans are now connected through basic mobile phones. As the blogger Kennedy Kachwanya explains, Kenyans even manage their money on mobiles these days. Mobile phone has become the people's bank. People communicate, people bank, people do all their lives around within the mobile phone. So it's very important. And the connection, actually to quote the number, the latest statistic from the uh, Communication Commission of Kenya is 29 million. That is almost 75% of the, the, the total population. That mobile phone banking system is called M-Pesa, using the Swahili word for money. Users buy credit from an M-Pesa agent and can then pay their bills or transfer money with a few taps of their phone. It has changed the lives of millions of Africans since it was introduced in Kenya in 2007, giving many people access to banking for the first time. Catch one yet again. Well, it has made life easy. And let me tell you, for example, initially, if you are working in Nairobi, because majority of people you see around here work in Nairobi, but they, they have their roots outside Nairobi, they have their roots in the rural areas. So, uh, for example, I'm working in Nairobi and I want to send money to my mom back home. You know what used to happen? You have to wait until somebody from the same region going back there, then you give him the money to take there. Or you put it on an envelope and then go and give it to the buses going. The, the chance that the money will reach where you have sent it is one low, two it will take time before the person getting. Now compare now, I just get my mobile phone and my mom has the money back home. That's how easy it has been. Yeah. M-Pesa provides mobile banking to more than 70% of Kenyan adults and has spread abroad to India, South Africa and even Afghanistan. The International Monetary Fund says it processes more transactions within Kenya than Western Union does across the whole world. So why has Nairobi taken off as Africa's technology hub? Eric Hersman is co-founder of Kenya's best-known technology center, the iHub, and he has an answer to that question. 
I think it's a combination of factors. The one is the fact that this that Kenya has always had a much more entrepreneurial um, culture than most of these other countries around it. So relatively speaking, it's just been a little bit more vibrant always. Secondarily, its its location on the continent makes it very easy for the tech corporations, the big multinational co corporations, you know, your Googles and your Intels and your Microsofts and Airtels to make this their headquarters. So that means there's demand for engineers and, and businesses that support this technology space. Finally, it's a city that actually has quite a bit of money in it, so it can be it can be put into technology. And the universities here are putting out good enough students that they can be hired into these corporations or start up their own companies and make something of it. But Hersman, something of a godfather to Nairobi's tech sector, does not overplay the potential of Silicon Savannah. What people have to understand is that there's still a very nascent technology scene that's still growing. While we have a lot of vibrancy and, 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 and really a lot of excitement in the space, it's still fairly young and, and we're going through growing pains as we speak. You know, everything from, you know, we have great tech hubs and, and um, new startups coming, but we need to figure out how to monetize them. We need to figure out how to uh, connect more investors into the startups. All the things that you see in the other tech epicenters around the world that have grown over time, everything from, you know, the Bay Area itself to Israel and then to uh, Bangalore. I mean, I think we're, we're a couple years behind them in our growth rate. And while M-Pesa has been massively influential, some question whether Kenya will really emerge as a world-class technology hub. But Hersman is confident that Silicon Savannah and the African market it serves has all the ingredients needed for growth. So all across Africa, we have some trends happening. One is that the cost of devices are going down, as well as the cost of data connectivity. And at the same time, the general population across the continent has more disposable income. So the middle class is rising, right? So that means that Africa really is the last blue ocean for technology most of the other markets are much better penetrated already. So when these big multinational corporations look at Africa, they say, okay, it's nascent, but it's coming. Or we have a billion people on this continent that are coming online using more devices. These are, these are consumers we can sell to. So Nairobi's tech entrepreneurs have made big strides by using basic mobile phones to solve local problems. Analysts are watching to see what apps they will come up with now that Kenyans are upgrading for the smartphone era. For Monocle in Nairobi, I'm James Rinal.